Like that protection suit there wasn't necessary. No one was low at all. And now you ha don't have it for 15 seconds, so your brig's gonna die because of it. Yep. Hello everyone and welcome to another Dihon video. My name's Dihon, and today we're gonna be looking at a Kiriko that switches to Moira. The person here commented that they were swapping to Moira and ended up winning. This was a plat game and it was very super sweaty. So they want to know if swapping to Moira was the reason and what they can do to fix this. So they're going to swap to Lucio to give a quick speed boost. That's pretty good. Swapping back to Kiriko to teleport in. Looks like we're going to be keeping some people up here. That was a bit unnecessary to teleport and... Okay, looks like we're going AFK there. Losing ourselves two people during the AFK. So I would say definitely that fight was the AFK. Anytime that you're not going to be doing anything in a fight is going to cause, you know, a, a, a bit of a loss and a um, failure for your team. Now, you also teleport through here when the tracer got weak and used recall you probably could have just wall climbed this too her and genji are able to wall climb this so we're just trying to regroup now our team's a little too overextended so they die We're definitely not using Kiriko's kit to the best of its ability. We're teleporting even though we're right next to people. We're not seeing the people that need our attention more. Could have easily thrown a protection Suzu there. Uh, I would say Kiriko needs a lot of work. Your Sigma's max health here, so we actually should probably be throwing Kunai and not not healing. Yeah, we're just not applying enough damage as Kiriko. And if you're going to be playing someone like Kiriko, you definitely have to be impacting with a little more damage than we're doing. You have to be very selective with when you want to heal and when you want to damage with Kiriko. Yeah, so we... Basically just got stomped there. I'd say just because Kiriko, you weren't applying enough enough uh, damage or at the right moments to kind of back them off of your team. And I think we were just kind of using our Suzu, you know, whenever we had it. And we weren't actually thinking about when it was optimal. So I'd say if you're going to use your protection Suzu, definitely just kind of use it when people are critical is going to be my advice for this. But you also do have to limit test yourself to see like, can this person survive without protection Suzu? And that's going to help you gauge whether you need to use it for certain situations or not. I'd say definitely still use it when people get antsy and such, but... Like, that protection Suzu there wasn't necessary. No one was low at all, and now you have, don't have it for 15 seconds, so your Briggs gonna die because of it. Yep, Briggs dead. And we're looking to teleport to the Genji, I guess. Throw up protection Suzu again, doesn't actually hit anyone. So now your Arisa might die because you don't have it for another six seconds. Yeah, everyone just dies because we lost our Protection Suzu. So we're definitely just not using Protection Suzu to the best of its ability. And I think that's why we're losing these these games on Kiriko. So we end up swapping to Moira, which is going to be a lot more healing than Kiriko. Could be some damage too. It also looks like we're not just not seeing our supports. That was a big stagger. 
That's a s okay, not a stagger. It's close. Uh, we could have waited two seconds. If you waited two seconds to throw a, a damage orb in before you coalescence, you could be bursting the enemy down a lot more. That brig actually might have died with how low she was. Whoa, looks like Genji's popping off with a blade. Hashtag nerf Genji. So now we're set up. Uh, definitely should have been a damage orb if you're going to throw an orb there. Hmm. Okay, that's fine. That fade was for no reason. So if we die here, it's our own fault. Okay, we don't die. Good. Uh, uh, that fade was kind of for no reason. Yeah, as long as you keep your brig up in these fights, you're going to win them. Uh, I think earlier on you were not healing the brig as much, and so... She wasn't getting the value of her kit as a support. Especially with how they're buffing Brig, she's almost going to become a must-pick support. So as long as she's alive, she'll be she'll be living. Brick and die, she overextended with her shield there. In five seconds, I would probably wait to coalesce. Okay. So we didn't have fade there, so that's why we got hit by that shatter. We kind of, again, faded for almost no reason since we're staying in the same spot. I'd say a big takeaway is going to be ability usage. Ability usage and peeling for the supports. The Moira is definitely making more of an impact, and like I said, it's probably because... Uh, we're not maximizing Kiriko's kit because we're using Suzu too early. The things we can work on with Moira though is uh, fade usage, peeling for her supports more, and comboing with that coalescence. If you guys are liking the video, make sure you hit the like button. If you guys want to see more coaching videos, make sure you hit the subscribe button. I do post videos every week to help you guys climb. If you guys have a video of your own that you want me to review, feel free to drop it down in the comments below and I'll try my best to get to it. Any questions or anything too, just comment it down below and I'll, and I'll try to get to it. And if you think Genji needs a nerf, just type hashtag nerf Genji. Uh, so we lose our brig there, unfortunate. This is good. So usually on control point maps, if you win the first point, Usually there's like an 80% chance or something that you're going to win the, the game in general. And that's going off of like pro stats, so it's not always exact, but usually your chances are higher if you win the first fight and first point because you're going to have alt advantage over the enemy team. Yeah, you can you can just tell that our healing up time is just higher on Moira than it is it was on Kiriko. Okay. So you can also see our orbs are very direct. Um, sometimes you you should get in the habit of bouncing your orbs off walls. It's not always necessary, but it will stop you from getting picked out um, at some instances because you won't be peeking around a corner and just getting your head popped off. Meet 
All right. So that was the video. Things we need to work on. As Kiriko, definitely just maximize her kit a little bit more. Probably play some quick play games and just figure out when's the best time to be using your Suzu. Uh, when's the best time to be teleporting. And focus on healing your supports mainly. And if you have a flanker kind of like Genji or something, teleport with them and attack. I, ha I do have another video that I'm going to put up in the card above me. And that's going to go over another kiriko player and what they can do better so hopefully that might help you too um as a moira player we are not using our fade very well we kind of are just using it as soon as we get hit you can kind of wait a little bit before you fade and that's going to allow you to you know get out of those fights hopefully when the enemy uses an ability already also we can combo that ultimate like i was saying earlier so you can throw a damage orb and then coalesce it's, and you'll get high burst damage which will take down the enemy team a lot better and yeah we we really want to be peeling for our other support because as a heal as a support you can't do it alone uh, i hope that helps and as always happy climbing